so then like a way that the blockchain could fix this is you know like I, i've been talking to companies and i've seen like how other uh, people are doing it like uh you know they put like a sticker like in the, in the shoe and then like when you're scanning with your phone oh, yeah, like it verifies that. it you know yeah, yeah. so like let me hey let me check your yeezys are they real you know like, like you know yeah you don't want to be fr- wearing fake stuff especially people calling you out you know yeah. so mm-hmm. verification like that's the most important part All right, welcome to The Brew. I'm your host, uh, Walter Salamaki. Uh, today I'm joined with uh, my co-host, Luis, and we got a special guest today. We got we got Eddie in the house, who is the uh, yo, yo, yo. first uh, NFT jeweler, which is going to be a, a late conversation talking about everything tied into uh, NFTs and everything else. What's going on right now with all the craziness, which we were literally just talking about off screen with all these altcoins and stupidity in the market, but also market application, which I think is a, it's a two-sided effect. But... Before we get started, you can uh, introduce yourself a little bit, a little bit of your background, you know, uh, where, where you came from. I know you also went to UCR and stuff like that, so you can give a little, little background. That also recommend pulling the mic a little bit closer just uh, for the audio, because I know. You want it at about a kissable distance. Oh, <laughs> Some Joe Rogan stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fist away, fist away. There we go. Fist away, fist away. All right, so what's up, guys? My name is Eddie Jaramillo, and I'm from South Central. And uh, yeah, I went to UCR. I just graduated last year, and now I'm, I'm here doing a podcast for, like, you know, <laughs> UCR-related students and stuff. So, I mean, that's pretty crazy. It's been a wild ride, but I'm glad I'm here, you know, and you just let's keep it going. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, uh, I mean, majority of today, we're going to be talking about things like NFTs. So before we get started, just for those that are tuning in and that don't know what a NFT is, a non-fungible token. And pretty much what that is, is it's a authentication of a digital art piece. And what we're going to be talking about today, which I think is quite fascinating, is how you took a concept like an NFT, right? And then you made it a physical product as well, because mm-hmm. that's something that I'm super fascinated in. And how do we how do we turn the NFT world into digital uh, physical products? Because it's a, it's a little tricky on that mm-hmm. end, because it's a digital system ledger to prove that it's legit and that one out of mm-hmm. one uh and you're bringing it into the physical space but I, I think to get started what what even introduced you to like the concept of like blockchain nfts any of these kinds of things because for most people you know it just goes yeah, right yeah, over their heads yeah. so then like my journey in the cryptocurrency career like started like when i was going to long beach city college right and i was just talking with my homie polar and then we used to talk about this stuff right about crypto and stuff like that and then like i've always been into like tech not super tech but just like reading about mm-hmm. tech you know and keeping updated so one day i found out about that guy that was creating the black market i forgot what what it was but that's how you would buy like illegal stuff and i was like whoa what is this this guy the got- silk road we, we don't we don't condone these yeah. kinds of activities no, but no. The silk road. this is how i found out about <laughs> it and then um he got caught by the fbi right mm-hmm. and it was bitcoin and i was like what is this what is this right and then like i started looking deeper into it you know getting down the rabbit hole you know and stuff like that and then i find out this coin engine coin and then i was like wow this is gonna revolutionize like the gaming industry like in my opinion back then right and then because uh there was a time where i was selling like digital assets already like for a video game right like i would create like this big dinosaur and then like sell it on ebay but i was like damn this is too much work like mm-hmm. i wish there was just a system inside the game that let me transfer it quick quick you know yep. so uh, i'm like so then that's that's how i started reading about engine coin i mean technically i was transferring nfts before nfts you know because Be i was thing, yeah i, I was <laughs> You know, I'm telling you, I was I was selling like this digital asset in this video game, which is technically an NFT, right? Yep. They just haven't given it that name. But all items like in video games, I think are NFTs, you know, like Fortnite skins, like Call of Duty skins, you know. That can be if they do yeah, it right. Yeah, yeah, if they yeah. do it right. And when they do that, that's going to be awesome, you know. So mm-hmm. then like fast forward now, 2020, you know, I get an NBA Top Shot early. And then I, I tell my homies, I'm like, get in this, get in this. It's cool, you know, like, it's the future, I think, right? And then just being in that, like, environment, it, like, it, like, introduced me to, like, more sectors of the NFT, right? And more people. So then, obviously, me, like, I like learning. So, like, I follow these people. I enter the discords. I look up stuff on YouTube. And I just started learning about all these NFTs, right? And then what it could do. And at first, I think where we're at right now it's like nfts are only art you know but like this is only the beginning oh, yeah. and it's like i just think people right now are focusing on the art part you know and it's just like no 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 like this is more than that you know it's just mm-hmm. this is just the beginning so then one day i was just like damn my lebron card i bought it at 80 bucks 
And then it was just like, I don't know, where three weeks later, it was like $3,500. I was like, whoa. <laughs> you know, I was telling my mom, like, what's up? We're going to buy a house, you know? Like, That's a down payment, you know, for a house. Because then I had the Anthony Davis, like, three-pointer. I had Rondo, you know, in the finals, too. And I'm like, whoa, my, my, my NBA top shot just looking nice, you know? <laughs> and then one day, I just, like, you know, I started running because I like running at night. And then I'm like, wow. And then I, I, I don't know what, what it was, but I think I was seeing this company called Object Infinite. Mm-hmm. And they're creating like these digital portraits yeah. mm-hmm. that are for NFTs, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, hmm, how do we get this? Like, how do I use this? How do I, you know, this is dope. And then I just started running and I'm like, all right, my physical asset, which is gold, right? I'm a jeweler, right? I work in downtown LA. I've been going since I graduated college, you know? I'm like, hmm, my physical asset is worth money and my digital asset is worth money. So why not just like, let's combine these two worlds, you know, the physical and the digital, you know, the crypto and the gold, you know, because like people, when they talk about like crypto and gold, it's like an enemy kind of, you know, Mm -hmm. because it's like Bitcoin is the gold and then gold is the gold, right? Mm -hmm. But I just, I'm like, wow, it'll be cool if we like merge these two together, you know, because it's like, I don't know if I'm using the word right, but a juxtaposition. Yep. Like, you know, so then like, I just seen it that way and I was like, whoa, all right, let's do this. And then, okay, at first it was the LeBron dunk, but then I'm like, wow, like you could put anything on it, you know, mm-hmm. any NFTs on it, know? So I mean like, who's going to be the first guy to put a Beepo on it, you know? <laughs> I have the most expensive chain in history, you know? Yeah. The biggest flex of the digital age, you know? No, it's smart. Like when you, when you pioneer something, right? like your name's associated with it and that's the that's the most important piece right like anybody else can potentially later down the line try to figure out and try to replicate you Mm -hmm. but they're not you Mm -hmm. right and i i think what what you brought up which is super unique is the way you were perceiving nfts into the value chain because at the end of the day like when people buy jewelry you can price a jewelry piece based off the value associated with it right Mm -hmm. like like somebody's like oh that price is that but like a lot of people don't know really like the pricing of jewelries and stuff like that. You're just going to buy it for buying it. Like obviously there is price tiers and mm-hmm. there's, you know, you know, quality gold. There's going to be your diamonds on there, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a multiple different factors. Mm-hmm. But then when you add another layer to it, which is NFTs, mm-hmm. which is already getting blown out of proportion in some aspects, what you're doing is you're saying that like, look, these NFTs exist out there and they have the same kind of perceived value to it. Let's combine them together and let's grow a value of an individual asset which I think is fucking genius, to be honest, because yeah. uh, it's, it's, for example, like NFTs right now, they make sense. And like you brought up, it's right now in the art world, which is, is fine. I think it's a good introduction because now people are like, you know, like, what is this blockchain? Like, how does it actually work? What is an NFT? Like, and they're researching it. And I think that's going to then open the door for these other possibilities. It's the first time that blockchain's like tangible to mm-hmm. people, mm-hmm. I guess. But art itself, like, what was it like? Um, Elon's like t- first tweet was like, like three hundred thousand dollars of some stupid stuff, or like up to a million dollars for like. It was a Jack's first tweet. Jack Dorsey. The, Jack Dorsey's the first CEO tweet. CEO of Twitter. Mm-hmm. It, it sold for like a few million dollars. Like, I think he did it for charity though. He did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, also, that's why I say that's the Also, Elon. Yeah. Also, Elon. He yeah. did it for. It's the ethical side. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm cool with that, but I I don't get the the side where it's like some people just um they. I forgot there was like one person bought like a kitten or something like that for like 200 G's or something like oh, that. It's probably <laughs> the, I mean, let, uh, the crypto kitties or whatever. Yeah, the crypto yeah, kitties. Yeah. I think one thing that's happening that's that's like at first, like I think Beeple and like all those like the bigger artists, the bigger digital artists that are happening. I think all that stuff is like cool. Like you mm-hmm. have this dude who like, like people like yourself, like people who fell into it that they were already kind of doing it, mm-hmm. you know? Um, like people had that thing where every day for what, like 3,000 days? 5,000. 5, 5, yeah, yeah, like 5,000 now he was making a digital piece of art like mm-hmm. and he was just putting it on twitter and being like here you go this is what i made today um all he did is just take what he was already doing and then just connect it to the blockchain and then connect it to to ethereum mm-hmm. and then he started selling it for what was that piece that he sold how many millions did he get for that i think it was like 70 plus million or like it was, 80 it was no yeah yeah it was like 80, 70 million cause like 69 something and people were like nice like he's selling it for like 69 nice. million nice um but the dude's like next day millionaire like Oof, it's yeah. like it, it happened that quick and now his piece is like he did um when he first his first ever nfts um he did in collaboration with uh it was like a buddy of his that was also a digital artist that was doing nfts before him mm. and he did he was like oh can you help me make nfts and he was like yeah i can help you do it and he was like what do you want to do and i was like he's like i'm just gonna get some of my old art pieces and i think it was like 
a hundred or 200 of them mm -hmm. and he sold them for a dollar each but on twitter he was just like all right i'm selling them for a dollar each whoever mm -hmm. can get some come get them and they sold out instantly and yeah. like now, if you still have one of his pieces, they're worth like 80 grand minimum. Yeah. But the nice part about For NFTs dollar. too, dollar, though, yeah. hey, the, the, the nice part, the smart move from him is that you also get 5% commission on every single sale. Well, I mean, it depends on what he puts, actually. How do you set it up? Yeah, yeah. I don't it, think he put any commission on, on the $1 pieces. On the, on the newer ones he did, but mm -hmm. I don't think he put on commission the old ones? on the old yeah, ones. Yeah, that, that's the crazy route. part. Cause like that royalty part after, like, you know, I think the best part is like the secondary market, mm -hmm. you know, because yeah, if your so. item survives the secondary market, like you're gonna keep getting that royalty forever, you know? So that's the important part. Yeah, no, and I, like the, the reason why I'm so fascinated by all this is because we are in a reseller market, right? Like mm -hmm. in overall, and like like these bigger companies are not realized, like Nikes and Adidas, they're like, shit, like, yeah, we're making shoes, but where you can actually make more margin and more money, that's why they invest into StockX and stuff like that. Mm, yeah, yeah. And I started realizing and understanding that because I was uh, helping, shout out to Jason in the in the Bay uh, exclusive shoes because I he, he, he wanted to get into NFTs too with mm -hmm. shoes and he actually figured out a way to tie the NFT side to some of the mm -hmm. shoes he's selling. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, damn, this is really fascinating. Like the reseller mindset mm -hmm. and then the NFT mindset is very similar. Mm -hmm. And if you do it correctly, you can make a completely new business out of it. Yeah, so I mean, like, one of the problems that I think NFT could, like, fix, especially, like, in the physical world is, like, let's take, for example, the shoe game, right? Like, how much billions of dollars are, like, fake, you know, fake shoes, you know, like, a lot, you know, a mm -hmm. lot of people be, I'm, you know, it's just increasing, I, like, you know? Are you buying replicas? Are you buying replicas? Me? Yeah. No. <laughs> but it, that's oh, what God, I'm saying. No. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Oh, dude, I, I have buddies who are buying replicas, yeah. and they, dude, they're fucking good but i know <laughs> they're like exactly they're they look like, like the Yeezys, they the look Yeezys real like right like 199 percent uh, off-whites you know? mm -hmm. we're talking like dior's dude yeah. they look yeah. identical one so, to one so dude. then like a way that the blockchain could fix this is you know like I, i've been talking to companies and i've seen like how other uh, people are doing it like uh you know they put like a sticker like in the, in the shoe and then like when you scan it with your phone oh, yeah, like it verifies stuff. it you know yeah, so yeah. like let me let, hey let me check your yeezys are they real you know like, like you know yeah you don't want to be wearing fake stuff especially people calling you out you know yeah. so mm -hmm. verification like that's the most important part yeah because at the end of the day that's what blockchain solves and i, I think that's where people need to like understand like if you don't understand anything about blockchain right like mm -hmm. the number one thing you just have to understand about it it creates trust it's verification mm -hmm. trust mm -hmm. because yeah. the biggest thing that none of us trust in medical and legal and any of these things is that you don't trust the other person mm -hmm. so that's why you have to have you know documents that are signed off mm -hmm. and sealed and all these kinds of things because people don't trust other mm -hmm. people well let, let's not have people in the middle yeah. right let, let's let's let a system that can validate in real time because w what you brought up with video games and we'll definitely we can definitely go into this but like where i have imagined video games is that you grind in video games you get some skins and stuff like that you should be able to sell them in the game make money off that right mm -hmm. yeah. and then also have the rights and exclusive rights for that like later down the line for things like 3d printing and stuff like that you mm -hmm. should be able to mm -hmm. cross level mm -hmm. the, the digital world into the real world mm -hmm. and then also cross them over games mm -hmm. like, oh okay like yeah. that's the other the big thing it's like if, if you do yeah. something and i think fortnite is the first Epic, Epic is genius about this mm -hmm. because they brought so much IP from like Marvel, right? And mm -hmm. like Predator all and did, all these huh? things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bring it into a center source and then why don't they use NFTs, dude? I swear they would make yeah. stupid No, money. I mean, <laughs> I, I think the, the parent company they just like put a whole mess of money into like yeah, the future part project of the metaverse. Too. So I mean, like it's Fortnite, gonna, you know, they're gonna create their metaverse, and everybody else is creating their metaverse, you know. But I mean, the, it's gonna be a tricky part how you connect all of them, you yeah. know. Well, have you seen the um, because of the lawsuit going on right now between Epic and Apple, all of the all of the legal documents and all like the stuff that's basically coming out that they had like on lockdown but because because apple wanted all this all this documentation they have to put it out so like they were gonna do a partnership on the discovery <laughs> yeah so they were gonna do a, a i think this for this playoffs i don't know if they're gonna do it now but for this year's playoffs they were gonna do a thing inside of fortnite to where you could play as like you could get a player like mm -hmm. you could be i think they were lebron james was gonna for sure be on it um, and then I think like two or three more players, like yeah. big time players are yeah, going to be there. Yeah, I was seeing that some, something like that, Marvel yeah. and NBA. Yeah, so they was going to do that and then they were going to let you play pickup games inside of Fortnite. <laughs> like Dude, straight that's up, like, like 1v1, shit, 2v2, bro. 3v3, oh, yeah, like inside, inside of Fortnite, yeah, yeah. they were going to let you do pickup games. Um, you could be a, an NBA character or you could be like any of the other skins, mm -hmm. but they were going to let you do that kind of stuff. That was going to be like an event mm -hmm. kind of thing mm -hmm. um, during, during the playoffs. Again, I don't know if they're going to still do it because mm -hmm. of now it's kind of like not as cool because people mm -hmm. know about it. Uh, I hope they do, but yeah, yeah I'm pretty sure they are. You know? Yeah, but it, it's cool seeing how like 
for sure like that's where epic is going with fortnite like mm -hmm. they're gonna create like a, a, a like its own little universal local metaverse inside of fortnite and I, I guarantee you it's gonna just become VR chat yeah. in like three years where you could just go in, like watch a movie with your friends, like play a mission. Yeah, open, open room, then you'd be like, all right, now I wanna go jump in a battle room. You can, you can already kinda do that. I mean, we already already do that, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. We already do that. It's just like, we're gonna take it to like the next, next level, level yeah. you know? Cause I remember like back then when like in the OG Xbox days, like, you could like see a movie with your like homie, yeah, yeah, Twitch, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the I little, yeah, you know, the little yeah, yeah, the yeah. theater, and your homie's like right here. Your other yeah, homie's yeah, right you here. Like, you can make yeah. the avatar <laughs> yeah, go yeah. like that. Like, oh my god, I miss those days. Yeah, yeah, it's the same yeah. thing. It's just, they're just you know they're advancing this like technology, and it's just yeah, yeah. it's dope. It's gonna be tight. No, it's sick, man. It's I, I think it's going into a into a fun little place, especially with like like you said, man. It right now what's happening is like you if you know what you're doing mm -hmm. like you and you've done it before you can mm -hmm. make money on video games now mm -hmm. like i think on csgo i've made like oh, tw yeah. i've made like two thousand plus dollars oh. on csgo yeah. just from opening up crates I and made, like I having made, stickers. I made 5k on runescape bro <laughs> take, oh, me, yeah, take me back to old school yeah. Yeah. runescape man dude, that's I, OG. i remember during catawise 2015 that's back when i was like hardcore addicted to to csgo I, uh, a buddy of mine was like, dude, buy, buy a bunch of these sticker packs. And this is back when I was like working and I shouldn't, like I had adult <laughs> money when I was yeah. not an adult. And I was just like, fuck it, dude. And I bought like a hundred dollars, I was like $1 uh, for the sticker packs. And I bought a hundred dollars worth of these sticker packs. And I just started opening, I kept some of them. I kept like half. I was like, I'm gonna mm -hmm. keep 50, mm -hmm. not open them. I'm gonna open up 50. And out of the 50 that I kept, I resold them like probably like three years later. I forgot about it. I just mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. I stopped playing CSGO and then I went back. And I sold them and they were selling for like 10 bucks a pop. Mm -hmm. So boom, easy right there. That Now that's 500 bucks. Yeah. No, it was more than that. Cause I made like $1,200 off those sticker packs. I don't remember what the fuck they were selling for, but I sold all 50 for like 1200 bucks. And then all the stickers that I had, one of the stickers, it was like this hollow uh, Catawise sticker, um, super rare. I sold it for like 500 bucks for a sticker that you could put on your virtual gun. That's wild, it makes no bro. fucking That's sense, wild. dude. But I mean, if the, it's a supply and demand. Yeah. You know? If people it, want it, they're going to pay for it. I know? get it, dude. But like, I was like, I remember when I was like super deep in a CSGO, I was like, fuck, dude, I really want a dragon lore. Like, I oh, want like, I want I all, you. I want all like the bougie skins, dude. <laughs> I want to get like a, not, not a red laminate, but it was a, a howl. I wanted to get like a howl because they, they took it away. It was like the, one of the rarest M4 skins you could get. Mm -hmm. um, but now I look back and I'm like, dude, like, I suck at the game now. Like I'm nowhere mm -hmm. near as good as I was back in those days. And I don't think I, like, you can't. I, your brain just becomes it, slow. You know. Seriously, no. Yeah, your brain literally just stops. Um, and I thought about, I was like, dude, if I had like a dragon lore and like a howl right now, I'd be like such a disgrace. I'd just be like missing all my like all my shots mm -hmm. with like these like thousand dollar skins on my guns. Oh wow, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean I, I get what you're saying because like my roommate when I moved to Riverside, you know, he told me about one time uh, when he had like a skin in kind of strike go, and that it was worth like seven thousand dollars. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. A That's what, you know people are already paying this money. Yeah, you know, yeah. they just like True. verify it through the blockchain. You know, they just all come together. I mean, it's gonna take. Some some time you know but yeah it's, it's not that it's not easy because you have to add it into the gaming like the the the, the fundamentals mm -hmm. are easy the yeah, fundamentals yeah. aren't hard yeah. but it's it's adding it into a gaming system mm -hmm. that is very difficult and i, I get that mm -hmm. side of it but my point is like dude it's, it's just issue with these old school guys that are running the company it's like dude you should get a young guy that like just give him some money put him on the yeah. side and like hey figure this out <laughs> and get it to me and make it work because dude nfts in so many aspects from gaming from jewelry from digital art to music, music yeah. to yeah, all these things big. insurance insurance deeds, like like some wild stuff like ticket ticket sales you know mark cuban is working on that on oh, his yeah, part you know yeah because yeah, at the end of the day an nft is a you, small dude. contract once once mm. the mavs can run it and they can make it work it's over like the nba is gonna pick it up it's gonna be dope for like tickets you know why because like the reseller ticket right now is crazy it's Awful, like you dude. buy a bad bunny ticket for like a hundred bucks the resale is like a thousand you know with the smart contract you can make it so like that ticket's a hundred and maybe the max 200 you know like it's all in the smart contract like you're gonna be able to put that and then that's better for the fans you know because like it's i so wish fixed. i had a bad bunny ticket you know yeah. but now it's, i'm not down <laughs> to pay a thousand dollars for I, it I you have know friends who are going to toronto because mm -hmm. they found them for cheaper there and it was <laughs> oh literally God, i shit you know dude it was cheaper for them <laughs> to buy the resales in toronto mm -hmm. and get tickets to toronto and get and get an apartment or mm -hmm. an airbnb in toronto than it was for them to oh get them when they were God. when he was See, here that's what i'm Staple. talking about you know and, and like nots could like help fix that you know because it is a problem and i think like owners and they should know it's a problem the reselling market on tickets you oh know? everyone knows especially yeah. the art like i know mm -hmm. that i follow a lot of artists who like 
they're like bigger indie. So like one of the dudes is like Bonnie Bear, like one, like one of my favorite artists, and he's like super vocal about the fact that like he hates it when mm-hmm. like the you know tickets go on sale for like I don't know front row you'll you get a ticket for like two hundred bucks or something like that, right? <laughs> yeah. And someone resells it for like five hundred, six hundred dollars, oh, making it literally like impossible for someone mm-hmm. who maybe actually cares about Take that person to go. Man. Yeah. yeah, man. <laughs> one one thing that I love and that's it's going kind of in the direction is um the f- uh like the NFC Apple Pay. Uh, tickets like mm-hmm. those are my favorite kind of mm-hmm. tickets when I just gotta like smack oh, yeah. my phone on the freaking <laughs> I mean, countertop. It's like LAFC, you could do yeah, it, you know. LAFC mm-hmm. does that. Uh, Galaxy does that mm-hmm. at, at Carson. F Galaxy. <laughs> F Galaxy. <laughs> no, seriously. I mean, I love Chicharito. Like, don't get me wrong, yeah. man. He's. I grew up watching him when he would play for Mexico, and then he went over to yeah, yeah. the Euro leagues. But like, hurts my heart to know he's like playing against like mm-hmm. the other team. But I mean, we got Vela though. Like, wow, hopefully man, we got he plays Bella. today. I mean, what time are they playing? I forgot. Five. Five. Oh, right. Yeah, Bella and I think <laughs> Rossi. Like, I, I, I can still, yeah, I can still yeah, watch yeah. the game. I think Rossi's playing today, too. Yeah. So. Oh, thank God. I mean, he's been injured, you know. We need yeah, yeah. I think. I'm almost mm-hmm. certain, but yeah, he's playing today. Yeah, I mean, those are fun. I mean, you know. Uh, how, how do you think it's going to be, though? It's like, the I'm excited about, like, when I can, if I can open up, like, my fucking Binance account, like, my trust <laughs> wallet, and be mm-hmm. like, oh, here's my ticket to the game, you mm-hmm. know, like, because it's, it's one of those things where, like, I, I think we're, we're in the moment right now where, like, if you can design, like, I hate Trust Wallet, mm-hmm. but I also like Trust Wallet because mm-hmm. if they figure their shit out, mm-hmm. there's a lot of room for them to be, like, a leader in, a, in the wallet space. Because they're one of the only wallets that, like, natively right now from, like, today, you can have um, crypto. You can you can have, like, both, like, actual coins. You can have all, they run all coins. Mm-hmm. You can also do those, like, you know, those, like, investment coins, like, the ones where, like, the, it pays like 150 percent like oh, yeah. monthly that's, interest. I'm like Yo. DeFi. That's the that's weird. Yeah, DeFi. and that's complicated. Yo, DeFi I'm trying coins to learn are about wild, that. dude. Mm-hmm. Like if uh, gosh dang it, which one is it? I know Binance has one that you can buy. Well, mm-hmm. I do literally 150 percent monthly return. Mm-hmm. If you have like, if you just have like fucky money lying around, like 10 grand, dude, I would toss 10 grand mm-hmm. into that DeFi coin yeah, so, so hard. So then, every month you're getting uh, back like 1,500 dollars. It's, it's, it's yeah, it's a bit more. Complicated. But don't you leverage it? You have you, to leverage you have, it. You have to leverage bro, it. That's dangerous. There's there's, there's two there's two coins. Yeah. The one coin is like where you get it's less interest. Once I think it pays like 90 percent, mm-hmm. um, and that's like super volatile. Like that shit could go. It really depends. Mm-hmm. Um, but the 151, the one that pays more is because your money's locked in for three months. Mm-hmm. Like you can't touch it for, I think it's 90 days. Yeah. You mm-hmm. can't touch it for 90 days. So like, you know, like, mm-hmm. you know, what, what do you want to lose kind of shit? Mm-hmm. But no, like the reason I like trust wallets is cause like you can, ho- you can hold all those things. Like, so you can ho- hold coins, um, the DeFi stuff, you can hold all coins, you can hold NFTs in a, in trust wallet. And it's like the wallet I think that can make everything flow really easily and make everything super understandable and like a nice UI. That's gonna be the wallet that everyone's gonna kind of kind of gravitate I think towards. You should have multiple wallets. Though. Oh you yeah, do. dude. Yeah, you I can't trust multiple. any of yeah, them. No. They're not secure. If you have one on and my... you hack, you get hacked in that one. That's their GG. That's all yeah, your money. I have, you know, you can't let that happen. I have crypto in like four different wallets. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. it, you know it's I and I think why well, I've all of my altcoins are in safe wallet just mm-hmm. because they have to be there. Mm-hmm. I don't have any other alt wallet. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, on my phone but yeah you know. and I, w- I would say like it, it for anybody who's interested in in things like crypto and getting crypto like yeah you should have different wallets and then also like if you're a newbie you Fucking should use things three like, verifications like three ver- <laughs> but also use yeah. things like coinbase that's actually like you can actually like like if you lose your money they have to secure it because they are not an ipo company mm, yeah, so yeah. like look at de-risking yourself especially when you're getting into this world because there's so much risk that people aren't like perceiving mm-hmm. the back of their minds or mm-hmm. someone can get a hacked you can lose it if there's a wallet that you use or like another platform you're trading off of and they go under you don't get your money yeah. like they That's have no though. securities you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're done. i mean this happened before <laughs> when like these markets like some marketplaces just like get hacked or whatever and it's like 50 million like bitcoin loss like whoa like well, you know that's the scary part because like it's people's like you know it's some people's like livelihood right there you know their investments yeah. in like the beginning it's just like it's terrible you know it's weird and I, I think it also goes without saying that if someone on twitter tells you that they can help you buy like some shit and they ask you for like your wallet address like just oh yeah don't. run <laughs> yeah just don't do like, but i mean isn't your your wallet address like public? So the wallet that you need the, it. So there's there's two wallet addresses. There's like the there's the deposit and then there's the yeah. withdrawal mm-hmm. one, right? The withdraw. Uh, fuck, I think it's the withdrawal one. The with yeah, the withdrawal one that's public because mm-hmm. that like that's the shit where you can like buy a burger with it and you mm-hmm. can scan your QR code mm-hmm. and you can because it's withdrawing from yeah, your yeah. account. But the deposit one, that's the one that can fuck you over. Like if you if they can get access to that one, then they can just mm-hmm. bleed your account. Yeah. yeah, if you're making a wallet like save your password 
and save your 27 what uh the phrase the same yeah, phrase the like phrase, be yeah. careful about that because well, like once you lose that like it's a gg oh, you it's won't get too. it back you know it's like Mm-mm. and like that happened to many people you know Most especially people. a lot of ogs that kept like you know bought bitcoin probably like at a dollar like 10 years later they lost their you know they lost their password they can't recover it, yeah. and like now that bitcoin's worth like a million you know well, there, just... there was that story back in 2019 when bitcoin first hit 20 grand mm-hmm. like back in the day um about that dude who lost like a hundred and something million dollars and he because he threw away the hard drive <laughs> where yep. his, that his shit was in Damn, and he went he literally went to the landfill like years later and he just started like just look do imagine the desperation bro. <laughs> oh, you go you go to a fucking landfill and just looking i mean it's like those dinosaur guys <laughs> you know yeah, with a little brush right there like shh, 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 shh. just excavate dude yeah. oh, man i think i just i just take the hard l dude and just just fucking lose myself. I'll for look a for it. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm going right like, now. Let's dude, go right talk, now. Talk about <laughs> treasure hunt, bro. That is like the, that the is modern. Treasure, that I mean, is nowadays, that's that's worth even what, like double it. Oh, hell no. Yeah, he he probably has. At least, he's probably looking harder now. He's yeah. probably 160 60 million there, and dude, I would I would pay like he probably like 300 million there. I would, I would give 50 percent for whoever finds it. Just get like you know hundreds of thousands of people to look for it. But yeah, no, I mean, yeah. aside from the point, this is this is actually like a good conversation we're having about like. The, the, there's flaws in, in things mm-hmm. like crypto and stuff like that because it is a secure thing and it it's honestly on yourself like you mm-hmm. have to oh, like yeah. understand yeah. what you're going into the risk associated with it what is the probabilities of it what you can do and what you can't do yeah because blockchain overall that drives it uh also you have to understand like what is the actual application like what does it solve like what we're talking about is like there is problems with ticket sales there's problems with resellers there's problems with trust um, and when you're looking at like what you want to get yourself into, don't look at like the hype behind the value of like, the, like for example, Bitcoin was the first one. There's mm-hmm. a lot of fundamental problems with Bitcoin. Like mm-hmm. there's a lot of Bitcoin, issues with it. It's a really shitty coin if you actually- Well, Bitcoin, Bitcoin doesn't, doesn't have do smart shit. contract, right? Bitcoin doesn't do anything good. It doesn't. If, Ethereum is legit. Yeah. If there should be one coin that's worth 60 grand, it should be Ethereum. Yeah, yep. And Ethereum that's why I'm It makes super, everything I'm possible, bullish. you know? I'm, it makes I'm this whole like Ethereum. web like possible. And what's cool about it is that like, yes, it Ethereum created this, but there's like hundreds and hundreds of people working on it, you know, yeah. working Ethereum on the two Ethereum. Supposed, uh, it should have been out already, but Ethereum 2 is summer, coming huh? out. So, yeah. Summer, summer. Yeah, summer and, then, and then you want to look at complementary things. So like, I'm, I'm really bullish on uh, like, the Ripple, more, right? well, not even just Ripple. Ripple has a lot of governmental good. I'm, I'm, I'm really bullish on things like Chainlink, and I'm really bullish on something called GRT. Mm-hmm. And GRT, the reason why I like it is you have to look at like, when you're getting into this stuff, look at what happened with the internet, right? Like, look at what the first steps in the internet, because it's the same conversation, like, oh, nobody's gonna do this technology, mm-hmm. it's too complicated, nobody mm-hmm. gets it, blah, blah, blah. And it's like slowly like application, NFTs, you know, yeah. now we got this, now we got that. I like GRT and stuff like that. I don't think GRT might not be the best one, but it's creating a search engine mm-hmm. for cryptos. I'm mm-hmm. like, dude, that's smart as fuck, dude. If you're creating a system that you can then leverage and search index and understand like what people's purchase behaviors are and create algorithms and stuff like that, I'm like, dude, that, that solves the huge fundamental problem. It sounds like Tableau. Remember Tableau? Or oh no? yeah, Tableau. I yeah, mean, yeah. it's all about data at the end of the day. You it know? is. Yeah. It is. It's all and, about and structuring data. data. But I'm, mm-hmm. I'm thinking of like this is the Google of your 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 blockchain system. Mm-hmm, like, yeah. I want to invest into the first movers in the areas that worked in the internet age. Don't mm-hmm. reincreate like don't recreate the wheel and like mm-hmm. look at the players in a market that are solving problems that exist because of the internet, mm-hmm. and and then jump into those and then start thinking of like how you can tie it into everything else. Um, There's I mean, a, I think I did. Yeah, yeah no, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's why I'm, I'm like, that's dead ass. Like, exactly what you did. So. There, yeah. I think I think one thing. Well, two two points here. One coin that I think is is going to be interesting once it does actually. I think you can like buy it, but you got to like contact the fucking developers and do mm-hmm. all this bullshit because mm-hmm. it hasn't actually released yet. Mm-hmm. It's like Mina or Mila coin or something like that. It's just gonna instead of it's they're trying to just create one centralized coin that is gonna act as the distributor coin for buying all coins. So like instead of having to buy like you know xrp or instead of having to buy uh, bnb or all these kind of things you would just buy like the that one coin and that would allow you to transfer it to all the different kind of altcoins that's kind of neat if all coins are still around in like a year i think that coin mm-hmm. is just going to grow because the only reason that smart chain and uh bnb is growing is because it right now is the only is like the biggest coin that is used to buy altcoins yeah i mean bnb is cool because like if you own it like it takes away from the fees that they charge and yeah. then they're creating their own marketplace like in a bit i think they re- they announced something like that so that's gonna be fun, you know. Yeah. I wonder how that's gonna happen. I, uh, I, I did. I think it wouldn't be fair to talk about NFTs without talking when we're talking about like the kind of downsides and stuff like that. Is how do you feel about all this like environmental uh, downside? Like the, I mean, not 
the big environmental downsides of NFTs and everything that goes like, into that. Like mining and stuff like that? Yeah, it's partially. So, like, I, I mean, I'm sure you know, but, hmm. like, when it comes to, like, transferring an NFT, like, during, like, the big craze, like, about a month ago or whatever, mm-hmm. when shit was just, like, popping mm-hmm. off, like, NFTs were getting traded left and right, I think it was, like, in that one week of, and like, heavy NFT trading, there was enough energy like created in that one week to power all of like some South American country for a whole year. Mm-hmm. Like literally like, like a lot, dude, like a shit ton of energy yep. was, was being used. So I'm, I'm curious as like how you, th- like how you feel about that. Just uh, cause like, I know in my, in my brain, mm-hmm. I'm just like, well, that to me just means two things. One, it needs to be more efficient. Yeah. Like, easy um then we need to figure out a way to make the actual blockchain way more leaner yeah like where it's not taking up so much time so much space and two we just need to do re- renewable like mm. why, why are we wasting so then i mean i feel like just being in this community and just like listening to the people talk like there's other people figuring out stuff for this problem and then there's like for example just for example is like uh tezos right they're like their yeah. own blockchain and like i've been in that community because i'll be on clubhouse and then we go to um the marketplace they use is called hickenuck so it's basically it's like basically a cheaper way of like minting stuff mm-hmm. and it's more eco-friendly too you know because it doesn't use all, up all that energy but um that is a definite problem because i mean you don't want to be minting and then destroying the world too you know so yeah. I, but at the end of the day honestly the biggest polluters are still big ass companies you know no, yeah, they're they're, yeah. The, they're the ones that could fix global warming you know picking up a trash like outside is not going to help anything you know I still, I still do it you know but like at the end of the day it still falls on big corporations yeah. that you know that pollute you know they yeah. need to stop you know they're the biggest factors in this you know yeah, yeah i get you I, but I, I do think though it's like uh, there there has like that shit has to get fixed oh like okay. asap oh, yeah. no like I, I dude i'm mm-hmm. i'm on your side 100 mm-hmm. you can go back to like old podcasts mm-hmm. i think fucking corporations are uh, <laughs> the fucking worst yeah. um like that's just that's just me dog like mm-hmm. it's like i don't fuck with them because they try to put the pressure on people and it's just not fair because mm-hmm. it's them doing mm-hmm. it 99 percent yeah, of the time it's so weird man yeah but it's it's one of those things where like i so at first like when i first heard about nfts i was like sick this is where digital aid this is this this is the obvious this is the obvious evolution of digital art mm-hmm. obvious um, not even art just like everything in general digital. honestly because we're going into the digital age you know it's just like it's gonna happen i mean like look at us 100 years back and then look at us now and then like look at us 100 years from now in the future die from splinters 100 yeah. years ago, <laughs> like <laughs> bleed out oh I'm yeah dead. that's it dude people people used to fucking just like eat something bad and be like i'm oh, fucking i'm dying dude here's my fucking will i'm writing that shit right oh now now dude we're, it's shit's different different nowadays but like it's one of those things where like you like looking at like all the benefits looking at all the pros i think moving forward it's one of those things where like we're in a situation now with like nfts where it's so early on that we can figure it out now Mm -hmm. like doing it cleanly right Mm -hmm. doing it more eco-friendly because it's gonna it's gonna keep fucking happening yeah. You know, it's it's gonna and, it's and gonna you're gonna have big thing. companies jump on board and they're gonna change stuff too. Yeah, you, so you, you think you don't so, like big companies now, dude? Wait until those <laughs> motherfuckers are minting NFTs. And like yeah. you think like NBA, like Top Shot and stuff like that. Like mm. you, they don't give a shit about the environment. They're just mm. pumping out money right now, dude. Mm. Um, but you know, it's it's right now. It's young enough to where you can figure it out really cleanly. And I think with like the communities that that are there, everyone wants to do it. No one mm-hmm. fucking want in like 50 years. No one wants to. Be like, well, I, uh, yeah, no, <laughs> no, yeah, and to the I got the NFT, though. <laughs> yeah, seriously, no, no one's gonna be like, wow, dude, I can't. I, we're standing in line for like three hours to get some water, mm-hmm. but like, fuck, dude, I got this sick NFT. It's mm-hmm. like, no, nah, dude, like, figure it out now, so we're not in a situation where like shit's bad. Um, I think for me, that's that's like the big yeah. Because I, I mean, NFTs like, we dog, can't have cancel culture canceling NFTs, you know? No, <laughs> it's not gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think they're already so. trying it's, to, it's, bro. It's, they're, they're already they're trying they're to. They're already tried. But like the other the other thing tied into that is I did read a research report that actually right now, even right now, like we're, as we're speaking, I was either sixty seven percent or up to eighty seven percent of uh, things are happening are through renewables. Because the countries that are doing like actually have I to farm this stuff, dude. our our company like our places like Iceland, our companies mm-hmm. like, like places like Denmark, because you have to have coolant systems mm-hmm. and coolant farms, yeah, and they're yeah. leveraging renewables because those countries are already ahead mm-hmm. of the curve already on that. And luckily, them. we don't have farms in the U.S. that many because the U.S. here no, we, we wouldn't care, man. Like it, it would it would not be. Uh, I I have uh, fuck. What was I on? I read about this dude who bought like fuck. What was it? It was like it's like four or five shipping containers mm-hmm. and just has. <laughs> fucking just literally from in from the fucking beginning as soon as you walk into that bitch all the way to the back is just full of, of mining rigs 
like mm, all the way okay. through and like the dude's making fucking oh, I cash bang. bro my, i mean that's why my I, man's is making dumb money dude. that's I why like all the computer stuff is like increasing in value like all the graphic cards well, yeah and but everything. that pisses me off dude, dude i can't give i can't me, buy give me a them gpus graphic. man you like can, you can. they're <laughs> all going i'm pretty sure they're all going to miners bro i got my fucking 2070 before all this mining bullshit cracked off but like now it's like i want to get a 3070 it's like fuck i can't i can't no but it actually is causing a massive problem in uh um in supply chain so for example the reason why there's a bad rollout right now of like xboxes and then and playstations is because they don't have the components they oh need to make God. the devices yeah. they've only sold like a cut like 20 million to this point like they <laughs> should be selling hundreds of millions <laughs> and they like have the demand for like people are like looking when can i get the next gen when can i get the next gen it's still and reselling xbox and ps5s are still reselling like the market is still there yeah, you know? so, and they, they can't, can't pump it they out can't, they I, can't yeah. give co- products to people because <laughs> the and the entire blockchain market is just saying <laughs> like hey we need all those components for us because this move, I mean, that's what happens. And that is the concern what we're talking about here with mm-hmm. resource management, right? Like mm-hmm. if something pulls resources, it can impact other things. Yeah. So like those are the things that have to be taught out. We're kind of in a gold rush yeah. right now. So no, hundred percent, man. <laughs> I, I, when I was in Mexico City the other day, I thought about, um, I found it. I saw an Xbox One X for sale, just like one sitting there. And I was like, I could probably resell this shit if I really wanted to. <laughs> I was like, but do I really want to go to go through customs with this fucking Xbox? No, I, I like, mean, it does, um, it does affect other markets because the crazy part is, uh, I don't know if you guys are noticing, but they're stealing like a lot of parts from cars. Mm-hmm. Like what the under, the under, what's under the car, it's called like a catalyst, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, the cat. Yeah. yeah so the then, gold, yeah, one day I woke up and my car just didn't have it, you Fuck. know, but then like my, my jeweler, jeweler, my jeweler told me that they're using this metal and then like they ship it to other countries because it's so valuable and then that they're using that to like uh, um produce um their mining rigs and stuff like that Damn. that's why that there's such a hard market in that like they're everybody's stealing catalysts right in the hood you know at least yeah. you know and it's just crazy i just woke up one day started my car it didn't turn on i was like what the hell <laughs> i was like oh man all bad <laughs> Yeah, man, it's it, it is fucking like you said. It's the wild, wild west right now. Like yeah. it, it oh, literally. Super wild, wild nobody. West. So here's the other reality. Nobody knows everything right now. So yeah. if you hear anybody no, who yeah. says like I'm a I'm a genius about all coins. I know this or no, I know no. that. They're full of crap, dude. No, every single person talks Except about. Except for me. Okay, I mean, potentially, <laughs> you, you, you might just be a... Um, uh, dumb uh, luck. Dumb luck. Yeah, I'll put it that way. A but pendejo <laughs> just like got lucky, dude. That's There's it. There's a lot of luck. There's a lot of luck in the crypto community, you know? And it's cool. I'm, uh, you see a lot of people succeeding, you know? Yeah, no, I, I, I'm, that, I, yeah. I'm, all, and I'm all about I'm all, that. But with ups, will come downs. And that, dude, that's what's going to show what the reality of the market really is going to be. Can I just say, I'm, I'm a, my first ever uh, crypto Discord I was a part of was SafeMoon. And at first, when I first <laughs> got into SafeMoon, it was like... Um, it was wholesome in mm-hmm. there. Like there was one story about this guy that was just like, um, he put in like he fucking somewhere in Africa. He was like, I put in like uh, this much, and I have like this many million coins. Oh. Like it's all, it was all my fucking money. And then when it hit the all time high, the dude was like, I literally made more money with this one crypto than I have like the entire fucking year here. And I was like, wow, that's fucking sick, dude. Like the fact that that's a thing. I hope th- I hope the motherfucker sold because if he didn't, <laughs> oh, it breaks my heart. You don't have the money to yourself. Yeah, exactly. Simple you don't enough. have the money to yourself. <laughs> um but no dude it like nowadays though like seeing the transformation like this is how i know it's like fucking wild right now dude like there's no regulation Mm -mm. is the transformation between like early on discord and there was like maybe like four thousand people in it to now it's like some hovering over like fifty thousand people in the discord safe more safe yeah yeah it's like it's huge dude the discord's massive and it's just toxic as all get out dude i'm pretty sure it's bad bye 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 hold 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 hold. dude i can pull discord right now so all you see is just like the bio (laughs) emojis like lamborghini emojis all throughout (laughs) the thing dude dude people are gonna lose so much like what's what's gonna happen and this is what kind of worries me a little bit because right now like i i think we're in the right direction of like getting blockchain to be adopted what is what is going to happen all coin craze like yeah if you don't if you're not getting in on all co- like i'm gonna fucking sound like a shithead right now but <laughs> if you have like a fucking hundred dollars to spare get it on a cheap ass altcoin that's like just cheap as fuck if it's not like, financial advice not financial <laughs> advice but if you, i will say this because my brother-in-law was yesterday he was just like hey how do i buy like altcoins and i was just like all right you got to do this and i told him i was just like look dude like you're it, pretend you're going to vegas right now mm-hmm. like dead ass like that's don't to think about it. don't roulette. take roulette, roulette dude don't <laughs> don't put any more money than you're willing to lose like don't fucking mortgage the house like some dumb <laughs> Masses did during the Bitcoin craze, or they literally took their stimulus checks that they actually needed for another payment. They just threw Dude, it right did you in. did you see? Actually, hold on now, fucking it, it went record scratch for that shit. If you if you had put in every single one of your stimulus checks into Bitcoin into not Bitcoin into Dogecoin, oh. you would have like a quarter million dollars. <laughs> you know what? 
That, no, that, 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 that's yeah. great to know. You know, those people actually need that to like. <laughs> no, I get it. I get it. I get it. But I get it. But like, dude, I I reach it like that though, and I sit there and look at it like, fuck, dude, am I fucking am I dumb or am I, <laughs> or do I, do I am I am I fucking losing my grip on the hustle right now, mm-hmm. dude? Like, am I not hungry anymore? What's going on with me, dude? Like, <laughs> we're building a business that can pay us like year, like lifetime dividends. I think but, I'm, like, putting, I'm, I'm, I'm putting I'm putting too much man. I'm putting too much of my hunger in this business we're starting, dude. Like, uh, <laughs> I gotta get scrappy again. <laughs> I mean, it's fun though. I mean, what do you guys think of? Did you guys see Gary V's project? Yeah, so no, I actually have. I, I, no. I don't no, fuck with I Gary have. V as much and, and anymore. That's, that's what I mean. Is like I think because of the whole movement. Like this is why I'm like pro the craze, right? Mm-hmm. The pro the craze is creating more innovation, He's more big time N- people. NFTs, are, right? NFTs, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are, are jumping in and doing stuff. What does concern the crap out of me is what is going to end up happening is some of these altcoins are going to go to zero, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, they're going to because um, it has ninety nine percent of these altcoins. There's an endless supply. There's no cap, mm-hmm. meaning that. There, there's eventually like it's pointless because if not enough people are pi- buying per day the value keeps dropping and people sell it's gonna be a sell off and then everybody's gonna lose money yeah. that's gonna be the first time it's gonna happen because we have so many people it's gonna be the that are unsophisticated it is that's unsophisticated investors and a couple people are gonna make a lot of money and everybody else is gonna get white yeah. and people, what concerns yeah. me is that they're gonna be scared right and say like oh that's a scam i don't believe in this cut well one you probably didn't you know, educate yourself enough before you that, jumped into the whole thing and yeah. you were thinking know, about it. Me, but. I just like investing in long term, bro. Yeah, so, exactly. You know, yeah. It's just like, so, I don't invest, really, invest I don't in the really good mess shit. with like altcoins. That's why I don't have no and stuff like that. Yeah. This guy gives me sh- the crap about it because the other day he did tell me if I did have it, I would have like, fifth, like both of us would have, well, I mean, I would have had the same amount as you. He took the bet that I didn't do and I would have yeah. like 20K in my bank account. That being said, <laughs> I don't. I don't think like that. I think about like, okay, where are the what you is this crypto? Stupid, dude, you gotta start. You gotta start <laughs> lowering those brain cells, dog. You know, I have. I already have three concussions. I need another one. Or something. <laughs> you, might, you might need it, honestly. At this point, man, you, you keep using that brain too much, dude. Um, I, I will. I will say this. Um, there's two things that I think are like big time when you're looking at cryptos and you're looking at any of the stuff. Is read the white papers. You know, like read up on the actual company itself, read up on and then read up on the roadmap, mm-hmm. like see what it is that they want to do when they want to do a buy. And then by looking at the white papers, you see one, what they're based out of. If they're based out of what's that one fucking uh, fucking beep two B E B E C P two or whatever the hell it's called. Like anyone can make a crypto with under under the B E C P two or B E P two protocol. Mm-hmm. So like that uh, that already should put you off just a little bit mm-hmm. but like read what the fuck they're about don't just listen to like some person on like tiktok being like oh look at the fucking market cap <laughs> look at how fucking cheap it is look at I the would volume not listen to someone on tiktok bro <laughs> <laughs> if you listen to someone on tiktok in the first place you're putting money in you literally are 100% gambling at that point like no, there's, yeah, there is ass. no difference at that dead point ass, because things like market cap and all these things that's how you start analyzing for exa- like well, my favorite is like the people that are doing like the, the peak drops oh. and like showing oh, them yeah. like it's I'm like, like dude peak this, here drop here peak this like, is ex- this yeah. isn't a fundamental analysis of a stock that actually has assets and value like this can go do do drop like literally to nothing because there's no value associated with it i mean that, <laughs> that last bitcoin drop well it went from like 22 to like 5k you know it was it, literally lower, in, in, lower. in 40 like 48 hours yeah like yeah. 3k yeah. 40, uh, it was 44 hours in 48 hours it dropped it half it, it halved mm-hmm. and then within that within a week it, f- it finished the rest of it but think about that that first 48 hours everybody panicked right mm-hmm. and so the so only so way so. you can sell something is if somebody is buying that on that price point Meaning that if you're trying to sell and then you don't have enough volume, that person gets the first dib. Mm-hmm. So they can sell and you're literally screwed until you get to sell at like 5K. So you just lost everything at that point. Yeah, and no, yeah, we, people haven't experienced that yet. I, it's going to happen with Doge and, and it's going to freak people out. But like, Dude, I, keep telling, I mean, I, I don't know. Doge is always going to be like a meme. It is. And it's always going to be, bro. And like I, memes I always think, survive. I, I, I'm going to be honest survive. with you guys right now. It's like right now I'm at the point now <laughs> where I, I honestly do believe that at the uh, doge and bitcoin are going to be like the fucking cockroaches that just like survive anything <laughs> just because like bitcoin is the first one so it's like yeah, your it's fucking grandma it. knows what yeah. bitcoin is Shout and then Satoshi. <laughs> yes, yeah and then fucking dogecoin everyone your fucking grandma probably knows what dogecoin is yeah. it's one of those things to where like it's just the it's just that cheap shit you know like yeah you can go look look at bitcoin like amazon stock like you can go buy some amazon shares for like what are they fucking trading that now like four grand yeah, 3500 3200 3200 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, pop right now like yeah go do that or 
you can go invest in like fucking Ford that's trading at like thirteen dollars a share. That's the way I see Bitcoin and, and Dogecoin. Like <laughs> it's just like so people, bad. <laughs> no, but it's it's the truth. Dude, we, we've had a conversation before. Know, the stock market is all emotional. Brain, no, but it's the truth though. It is. The stock market is all emotional, and what's happening now mm-hmm. is the crypto market is finally starting it is to right get now emotional. It's people. emotional. Right now yes. it's emotional. When exactly. it's when it's it's, it's, a, it's a buyer's market. That's right why. now, when it's a bullish market, it becomes an emotional buy, and it's all based off what you perceive value you is, and it's buy the rumor, sell the news, and that's what scares the living crap out of. That was the whole thing with GameStop. All these things like look i'm all for the thing that game like the gamestop situation was mm-hmm. because yeah. I, I think it was a good that. pushback yeah on like cool. all these people yeah. that are saying like no you can't do that i mean you've been doing this for people i mean they forever. shorted it is their fault exactly yeah, like, and they overshorted they didn't just they, short it they, they shorted over- it more than they're even allowed to it's true so my whole thing there though what concerns me is that when when you start messing and manipulating financial markets like that you don't understand it can cause literally what happened back in the Great Depression because that's the whole well, thing with penny stock pushing and like I, everybody just started yeah. losing money. Then everybody goes to the banks. They're like, I need my money back and all these kinds of things. And yeah. people start freaking out. I honestly that think can happen. I honestly think that this is just going to be another dot com bust. I don't know when it's going to happen, but the altcoin at least altcoins. It's like right now it's early on. Make your money. Get the fuck out of there. Set your set parameters. Like don't make yourself emotional. Like be about it be like i'm putting in this much money and put on a spreadsheet put on a spreadsheet whatever you can lose bro invest whatever you can lose that's that's the best advice i would give anybody bro so i I have a question for you move like moving forward like from what you can see and how like the more your market's going like nft market um do you think like what what's the next uh, hand is a what's the next uh let's let's play like this let's play long term what's the next three years like for you what where do you envision the next three years of nft like what new technologies do you think should exist to help you fucking get your bag you know like <laughs> uh, like seriously though because like you, you're an artist like mm-hmm. that's that's your shit right now mm-hmm. your shit is fucking getting your bag dude like what in three years what do you think is going to be there that makes it easier for artists to do that uh and then what do you think is going to be here and not be here anymore like what, what are the things that you think so i feel like a lot of these artists are not going to be here mm-hmm. you know yeah it's that's just a big like thing. especially yeah. like the ones that are like pumping up their price and then you're selling at all-time highs just because of like fomo and stuff like that so i think that's gonna like a lot of projects are gonna definitely disappear you know because they don't hold value you know they have to hold value you know but in something three years from now i'm just excited about like the metaverse bro like that's gonna be super crazy mm-hmm. you know it's yeah. just like i want to put on my vr set and just like go to like the west world or something you know and just <laughs> yeah. like do my own thing in video game you know and with all my digital assets my all my nfts you know my my nft gun my nft skin you know my nft chain you know like have you seen the um their i forget which which website it is but you can have like a, a house like a virtual house mm-hmm. that you can hang up your nfts in have you seen that mm virtual house yeah it's like a virtual hallway okay so then like uh I don't think you can a lot go, of these people in VR, a lot of these people are starting to create like their own virtual like property already so then there's like the central land right yeah and like bro it's like real estate but it's like digital real estate right mm. and it'd be going up for auctions bro and my homie just said that he bought like a plot of land on the digital world right for like three ethereum which is like what nine thousand dollars yeah, right like now bro 10 grand, yeah. and then in this world like he wants to create like a no, toy shop that, for yeah. all his nfts you know so then like when you or you or me you know put on the vr sale we go into the metaverse you know we'll go and we'll go visit his land we'll go see his art you know we'll go see his exhibitions or you know it's just something else or maybe someone creates like a cool ass roller coaster you know it's just like it's up to anybody to create because it's literally bro it's, it's you can create anything you yeah. want you know yeah. you can create anything you want it's like this is the beginning and but the one thing though is you got to make sure that you're building this stuff on the right platform mm-hmm. because if you end up building and investing and creating something on something that is not going to exist mm-hmm. everything you invested mm-hmm. into is nothing right mm-hmm. so like that that's for my whole thing it's like i'm i'm somebody who I can be very patient if I need to be, but I will look for those strategic opportunities and I'll, I'll jump in like full speed ahead mm-hmm. once I see it. I haven't seen a single platform right now that I'm like bought in, like this is this is it. Um, but I think we're getting there. I think I think we're right around the corner of like being able to build something that's. I mean, they're building there right now, bro. Yeah, they're as we speak right I know. now. That's crazy. That, yeah. That's the crazy part. And like like it, we're moving yeah. so fast, right? Like, so fast. It's like 2016. It was the whole like okay. This is stupid. This doesn't exist, right? And then subtle hype, and then God, more dude. people are investing. Like, because I went to the blockchain conference in LA and listened to those guys. I'm like, dude, some of the stuff that they're trying to do. Back when, if fuck, they can pull this off, man, this is insane. Back when Bitcoin was hovering around 200 bucks, I remember I had. A, I was like, I'm gonna invest. <laughs> I'm gonna invest in either stock, 
or crypto. I bought stock. I was dumb. And then, <laughs> and, then and then and then I said I said I can buy five Bitcoin, and this might go down, or I could buy some shares of some bullshit, and mm-hmm. it's probably gonna go up. That's my fucking dumbass thought. If dude, if I had fucking five shares of Bitcoin right now, a fucking I I I just see me fucking pull up in a Lamborghini, the Prius, dude. I was like, <laughs> who would have been in Cancun hey, no, right no, now? Yeah, bro. No, I would have no, been no, in fucking still, Tulum right no, now, no, no, chilling. No, no, you still would have rolled up in the Prius, but you gold would've... rims, dude. Yeah, yeah. Spin gold rims, gold rims, dude. Yeah, I got you with the gold. Yeah, I got you with the gold rims, right. oh, Pimped out and some had Dayton's on there. Oh man. <laughs> nah, but I mean, it, it's fun, bro. I mean, I'm excited. Like, it's literally just the beginning right now. And just like... That's the crazy thing, dude. Yeah. It is literally just the beginning right now. Yeah. And I don't think people in, like... Like, Bitcoin's been around since I mean, 2013, 2012. But like, mm-hmm. dude, that's like... That was the bullshit. No one knew about it. 2016, people kind of knew about it. 2019, people lost a lot of money because of it. Mm-hmm. 2020... People got a lot of money because of it, and I think it's I mean, here to stay. Twenty twenty one, people are still getting hella money from it. Yeah, you know? it's true. Yeah, and they will keep getting money. Like mm-hmm. if you, if but it's like you, you can't just take, you can't take the stuff that made people money last year and think it's gonna make you money this year. Straight up, yeah. that if is not gonna work. If you, you got, got money and if, if you're putting money in Bitcoin now, what the fuck you doing, dude? I mean, you're still, it was still. But any grow, any but money like, that you're putting in crypto right now, I honestly do believe should be going towards Ethereum. It's gonna hit five grand, I think, by the end of this month. It's gonna I hit ten Ethereum. grand by the end of I this year. I love Ethereum. Dude. Ever since I found out about like cryptocurrency, I've always liked Ethereum just because of what it could do, just because of the blockchain, you know. And that's why I created, like, you know, I created the Ethereum blockchain, you know, for like respect for that just dope ass token. Yeah, I was gonna you know, ask you that little bit right there. Is yeah, that an Ethereum, it's to- Ethereum. Yeah, it's Ethereum token? Yeah, so it's I like- style Ethereum right there. Yeah, I had to, and it just makes perfect sense, bro. Ethereum blockchain, you know, it's just like it was the perfect name for it. And I'm glad, you know, I'm glad I came up with it. I'm happy, man. Now you know, it's a one-on-one piece. Yeah, have yeah. we uh, have we talked yet about Steve Aoki and how that all that shit went down? Can we talk about that? Yeah, yeah. So Let's then, talk about it, dude. so then, uh, well, from the I, beginning, I want, from right. when, when you were born to when you met <laughs> Steve Aoki. <laughs> uh, all right, so first my dad and mom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, but uh, okay, so then I posted. That day was crazy because uh, I posted first on Reddit and then like Reddit loved it, right? The NFT Reddit. And then I'm like, oh, all right, I'm going to post it on my Twitter. Let's see, you know, because at, at first I thought like, damn, people are going to make fun of me or something, you know, just because it was just like so that weird. Artist, dude, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just like, oh, I was like, I'm like, damn, it's my first jewelry design. I'm going to mess up my name. Like, should I do it or should I not? You know, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to do it. You know, Reddit loved it. And then I have posted on my Instagram. Instagram kind of loved it. And I'm like, all right, post it on Twitter. And then I put it. And then just like, in, I, I tagged like a couple people. And I guess they retweeted it and like favored it. And then out of nowhere, like it just was skyrocketed, right? Nice. So then like the next day, um, I think the... Um, the NFT artist that worked with Steve Yoki, his name was uh, Antoni Disco or something like that, right? Mm-hmm. I think he's from Germany. Oh, he's creating some crazy ass NFTs, bro. Really, really dope. But um, he posted it on his story, and then I don't know where I just seen Steve post it on his story. I was like, whoa, that's dope. You know, 9 million followers. I'm like, that's tight, you know? And then I messaged them. I'm like, yo, what's up, Steve? I want to show you the piece, you know? I, I, you know, like, let me show you the piece. Let me go to your crib. Oh, no, no, I didn't say that, you know? But, like, I would love to show you the piece. I told him, and he's like, oh, yeah, he's my he's my manager or whatever. And, like, contact him. And I was like, all right, cool. He's like, but I'm in Vegas. I'm like, oh, you know, I'm in L.A. <laughs> So then I just hit up my homie Daro and then I was like, what's up, bro? You down to go to Vegas this Sunday? I pick him up like at 3 a.m. and then we just drive off, you know? Damn, no traffic. Yeah, we just drive <laughs> off yeah, to dude. Vegas, bro. And then, yeah, I mean, we, we pulled up to his crib. I showed it to him. He loved it, you know? And then, uh, bro, then we came back, bro. Oh, my God. The worst part about that whole trip was that my ac wasn't working bro oh, oh no. no oh my god so then bro, at least that, it wasn't the summer yet bro. that that <laughs> drive from back i was like oh my god i'm in the oven bro I, oh my god yeah, but i mean it was so fun when you're, when you're going through like the actual desert part of it yeah, yeah it was or definitely it says that like if your car breaks down and all oh, that because all those signs yeah. like back to back to back yeah so i mean it's definitely a cool ass experience you know and then i mean i took my homie dara and then he loved it too you know and just that whole drive me and me and him were just talking you know and like it was just, I don't know, man. It was a good adventure, you know. I appreciate mm. it. I mean, I mean, now, I don't know. I got some fun projects, you know, but I don't want to say it right now. But I think they're pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, especially my new chain. I mean, you already seen it, you yeah. know. I don't want to take it out yet, but I mean, that's more of like a traditional piece, you mm-hmm. know. But I mean, like the possibilities are endless, you know. Like I could like, I could keep making one on ones and work with like 
dope ass 3D artists, you know, and then they yeah. create the NFT and I create the jewelry or like we work together, you know, it's just like the possibility are endless now because like you could just switch the NFT whatever you want, you know, mm -hmm. and just, oh man, I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, I, I think moving forward stuff, it's like, even like with all the shit that's coming out with like foldable and like bendable OLED displays and stuff mm -hmm. like that, I can see like so many cool applications yeah. with like jewelry that you can like, like I, I imagine like just being able to like weave the actual screen into mm -hmm. the chain or like mm -hmm. like imagine like a cuban link but like half the links are like a screen or something like that like i mean that's gonna be definitely hard you know i'm no, trying yeah. but i mean like that's in, that's that's like a couple maybe a timeline away you know not yeah, right yeah. now I get impossible you, right now this is know? just my i have no idea how yeah. jewelry works brain <laughs> talking right now <laughs> yeah, i feel it if you ever make the uh, the OLED screen Cuban link, hit me up. I'll, uh, <laughs> All right, I got you. He'll be buying with his Doge one. I'll be buying with my fucking <laughs> Doge millionaire right there. I'll put a Doge on it. <laughs> oh no, that's that's great. No, I you know like I, like like we talked about uh, before a couple of weeks ago as well. Like, I'm I'm super curious and, and fascinated where you're going to be able to take this, and, mm -hmm. and excited to see like what the next stages are because I think I think you figured out something that was obvious but just not thought about right mm -hmm. like it's just it, it's it's such a logical thing mm -hmm. that like right when you said i was like i don't i don't know how like that didn't cross like bro me too <laughs> like, i think yeah. about it i'm like how did i invent it like what it's like, like oh half, the, half the good of fucking inventions you look at it and go ah oh, fuck yeah that fucking that's hey, but like bro <laughs> i suggest sense. like go run at night yeah like because like when you start running like i just feel like your brain starts working and you just get this clarity of mind and like every time i'm running i'm just always talking to myself like but that's in a good way you know it's just like creating plans or like looking at things like a different way and then i mean this is what made it possible you know one night i was just running and then i was like this and this boom just do it and that was it easy yeah like i like uh, that's that's the healthy way to do it my, my way of doing <laughs> it is like you go out for like a nice nice night of drinks you know at, at bars and stuff like that and then you come up with a free logic just eat a fuck yeah you, you, <laughs> just, you then you text nikhil and you're like hey we're starting a company you like, yeah. from, from what i did <laughs> back from italy bro. you just eat an, eat an edible and lay in bed like a monk yeah. staring at your fucking yeah. ceiling just wondering what's next <laughs> no yeah you should go run exercise and stuff like that does like i when i'm at the gym i'm like always mm -hmm. thinking of like what's the next thing what's the next thing like this mm -hmm. is it just clears up your mind and you're not like overthinking stuff mm -hmm, like that's true dude i feel like that's why for me and drinks like talk about getting stupider right like i, I need to like dumb myself down a little bit and then i'm that's like, when all your but you do what the dumber you are that's when your best ideas come through <laughs> it's crazy we gotta just have you be drunk 24 7. it's not gonna be you know it's not gonna be healthy for you but it's gonna be good for the business <laughs> honestly i don't even like drinking bro Hey, I respect you. I'd rather smoke on the other side of the coin, smoke, dog. Man. It's I can't, I can't, I don't smoke like that, dude. It's like, but I'll drink, hundred yeah. percent. I mean, I'll have my beer if I go to the bar. You know, I like, I love draft beer. I love tasting different kinds oh, you like, of you beer. Like a good you know? BL, <laughs> a beer. <laughs> but light? What's what's going on? What, what are you? What? Are you nah. like, like a like a like an actual like nice draft? Beer, yeah, like, like, and I always like picking new draft beer because mm -hmm. I I like tasting new, yeah, new yeah. beer. You know, but I mean, like getting super drunk and hammered, like ah, that's not the way. You know, I'd rather just dude, like I'm fucking drunk right now. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Go get a bottle, hey, bring <laughs> us a bottle, dog. Bring, bring a bottle of tequila or something? Like fucking shit. drove here, dude, fuck. I have a Tesla tequila. Oh, fuck. do you really? Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. That yeah, was yeah. cool. Uh, but yeah, I mean... No, I, I think uh, that we, we've had a good, very actually exciting conversation about NFTs. And this is probably, it. for those listening in. Um, Does this prove that you were wrong and not inviting me to that blockchain conversation? Oh, no, I'm very Let's right see. for not inviting <laughs> you to that blockchain conversation. He, he's see. super salty because I uh, I had uh, two, two gentlemen from uh, Singapore that run mm -hmm. the biggest blockchain accelerator, or mm -hmm. one of the biggest blockchain accelerators. We talked about blockchain. Well, oh, the biggest in Asia, right? It's the biggest in Asia, but it, it might be actually one of the bigger ones because I don't, I don't know actually that many blockchain accelerators. Aside yeah. From, I don't wait, know, wait what the, what's an accelerator? What the, so an accelerator program is where like an early stage startup that like <clears throat> might not have sales it or really early in the process, they go into a program where they get some investment funds and then you like they help facilitate and actually like build the business and structure it in a very very intensive program that's usually like 10 to 12 weeks mm -hmm. uh, and then you have like a working space and stuff like that you get mentors and then you get access to investors and like it's a good little hub if you want to like accelerate call accelerate because it like accelerates the growth of your business mm -hmm. the idea is you go in you should be at a certain point and you get out you should be at a certain point mm -hmm. and then you get into the market yeah. it's not for everybody it really depends on what kind of business you're building out it um, weeds out the bullshit. It, it, yeah, it weeds mm. out a bunch of the people that you know talk to talk, but don't yeah. actually do yeah, stuff. Definitely. That's what accelerators are for. Like it, it'll you only get accepted if you actually have something, and once you get out of there, they'll make sure that you're ready for the big time and like you can actually build a company out. So I mean, some of the stuff they're talking about for blockchain, there, man, like 
it's tell, wild. Tell them to open up an office in LA because like I've been looking into it. There's investment firms in LA like up the ass, like crypto investment. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's not really any accelerators in LA. Nope. There's just a blockchain I'm, summit. That's it. Yeah, so I'm saying it's just the summits and like these these like moments when like a few like industry leaders show up to LA for like a weekend, but nothing really. <laughs> yeah, because I mean the biggest problem. It's just like teaching people education. and making them learn <laughs> education. Yeah. yeah, like how are you gonna do that? Like, I'm pretty sure everybody like that's really into the crypto world. Like, they study it or like they do YouTube videos or you know they read articles. But I mean, like the what basic do, people don't do that. You get me? What's happening right now is the same. Is that shit where like you have these, you have these geniuses, literally like the people who are making like, like if you're making an altcoin, I could I could fucking make one in like five minutes mm-hmm. nowadays. But like these people who are like legitimately making really strong cryptocurrencies that have a oh, mission so behind it. It's so complicated. It's mm-hmm. super complicated, dude. Like you have these little geniuses who just get too stuck in their brains and they just make a thing without <laughs> knowing how they're going to one, sell it or two, make it applicable to everyday use, right? Well, I mean, that's how Dogecoin was created, you know? Well, he was on the podcast with Ben Baller and he was just saying like, I just did it to do it, you know? And, dude, and you, look at it now. Did you see one of the co-founders that sold all of his shit? Just, for, like, just oh, that's, that's, that, that, that's, dude? that's the guy, yeah. That's that's the guy? He sold oh. all his Bitcoin. Yeah, I mean, not dude. Bitcoin. Doge Doge Coin, yeah. He sold Doge and some other, and like Ethereum and Litecoin, and he he <laughs> got ten grand out of it because he he got laid he off. Him, so like, I feel bad for the dude, man, because he got bought laid a off. Honda when he could have bought a Lambo. <laughs> yeah, dude. And like you, you, you could have bought a Bugatti, bro. You like, could hear <laughs> his, you could hear in his voice, dog. Like when he's talking. I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like the community would take care of him. You know, hopefully, he's hopefully. a legend. Hopefully. He's, he's a legend. I, I, mean, I would, legend. I would hope the community gives back. Those that make the money off of Doge should. You gotta should, tip that man a little bit. Yeah, know? like you know, or at least like help finance a legit project in crypto yeah. or something like yeah. that. Like, but no. So like, you have these geniuses who are making these projects who have no like. You, you, it's like when you when you talk to like a scientist or like someone in like an engineering department. Like, there's a reason that there is there exists a marketing department and an engineering department. Because you have these, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta yeah, play you have, you have, you have to put my, the doge on, dude. Doge. Oh, it turns off. I need to fix it, bro. I mean, you know, it's still a lot of ways to fix this stuff. <laughs> MVP, bro. man, MVP. Yeah. <laughs> so you have these people who like have no idea how to actually manage the damn thing. So like, I think once, once you start creating groups like accelerators that tie in like really strong projects with really strong marketing. Forget about it, dude. Like once you can get blockchain into like education, once you can get it like deep in education, deep into medical, um, deep into like government where it's like, like, like you brought up originally, like when you have like deeds, when you're doing like all these other like legal contracts mm-hmm. through the blockchain. Smart contract. Exactly. What you, mm-hmm. you want to know the reason why they don't exist in the US right now, or there might be some smaller ones, but they don't exist is Singapore's government actually invests into that accelerator program wants to push it forward. Oh, What's damn. the US government doing against the Dude, cryptos? They're that? pushing back. They're on pushing it. back on yeah, it. They're putting more regulation. They're putting more regulation. Yeah. Like regulation is not necessarily a bad thing, right? Regulations can work in certain mm-hmm. aspects. And that's actually one good conversation we had with the guys because like they Singapore's really regulated like mm-hmm. it's way more regulated than US but like what they're explaining is that actually takes out a lot of the unknown so it makes developers mm-hmm. more comfortable and you can actually build businesses out of it because you know that you're not gonna like build a business end up in the freaking prison for building something that you you just built out but in the US I think it's the issue is that it's like the ambiguity like we don't we don't know what the rules are bro <laughs> I think I, it's just the system not wanting to like lose control, lose control. yeah uh, but they already technically did because they're late on it, you know, that yeah. they're late on it. That's why they're so mad. It's, That's it's, why it's you the know? old school mindset. It's, yeah. it's called the old money mindset. Yeah. The old money yeah. mindset wants to hold on how they own stuff yeah. versus creating the new wealth. Yeah. And that's why the U.S. is behind an AI. Yeah. It's behind in blockchain. Behind it's behind in renewables because the mindset of here is like, we're the wealthiest yeah. country. Screw everybody else. I'm like, dude, I'm sorry. But like with these new technologies coming yeah. out, we might not There's be the other dominant. countries like already <laughs> beating us in certain stuff. You know, I'm like, yeah, we, we might be the number one country, but we're not the number one country like in certain subjects, you yeah. know, like we should be the number one in everything. We're we should America, be researching everything, right? pushing forward. But we're not, nation. we're not. Yeah. We're like, we're stalling I, it and we're being weird. I, I read this, uh, this opinion piece talking about how if the U.S. goes into another recession, like the likelihood of them banning like crypto or like uh, Bitcoin is like pretty high, mm-hmm. kind of the same way that they ban gold when the gold standard went away. It's like when people started buying, like selling off their U.S. dollars and just putting it in gold. But that's I don't, when the US was I don't like, like U.S. dollar, bro. I, like uh, it's just like losing money. I'm losing money it's every inflated, year. You know, yeah. it's like yeah. why have it in a bank account and like lose your oh, money? Yeah, you know, I, it devalues when you can buy like crypto. And bro, it that's, just that's why I don't have a fucking savings account, bro. Yeah. I don't believe. <laughs> That's, no, it's like, no, you're, you raise a good point though, dude. It's like, invest your shit. 
Because, mm-hmm. like, at least you'll do something with it. Like, people mm-hmm. who just, like... Or put it in assets or something. something yeah, or, like, Tesla, Tesla or, like, it, Amazon they, or, like, Coke. It's, you know, it's, it's, be, it's, not, bro, it's, it's because, like, all our lives we've been taught just fucking save, 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 mm-hmm. save. Put in a savings account. But we're never fucking taught what mm-hmm. we're supposed to do with it. Mm-hmm. And get like, a house, get a mortgage, and pay back the banks. Like, exactly. <laughs> no, dog. Like, <laughs> how do you make that money to more money so you can yeah. afford that house? You know? How do you do that? Fuck a savings account, dude. Put that shit, invest it. Because when it's in a savings account, what are you gaining, dude? Like, 0.001% interest? Nothing. You're not gaining nothing because like the point one api the yeah, deflation exactly, is worse dude. man even like if you get like fucking what's that ally bank whatever they're they're the best in the fucking business they only got like 0.4 percent apr mm. it's like fuck and that all shit, these dude. banks like they don't even keep 100 percent of your money you no, know? They're no they don't. They, what is it like three per 30 percent or no, something no, no, so that, that's the craziest part now is the way that the banking sector works and the way that like let's say like we need a stimulus in the economy there's there's a lot of false reality like the the fed doesn't print money anymore so what they do is they create a allocated like they do print some money obviously mm-hmm. they have to fluctuate in the market but the way that it works is banks actually have a digital note now saying that they have x amount that they own right mm-hmm. but the money is not in the bank they only have three percent of it it's on a spreadsheet mm-hmm. meaning that the money that's circulates at all times is it's it's, it's all digital so it goes right back into like it's all digital already (laughs) it's all digital already bro it's both uh why the fuck do i gotta wait three business days for me to get my fucking money dude yeah. oh, yeah. give me my money you know the freaking headache i had to pay us payroll and do bank transfers and stuff like that i wasted like five hours of my life calling me my bank f- after bank i'm like now, all right how imagine- long is it three to five day business trip i'm like i need that money now like how can i how can now i could, speed this now up? could you imagine if we just had like a qr code and we could just go bloop there's my money yeah i'll be like, like oh you guys, want, crypto pay- does, you guys want payroll all right here, here you go just, uh, uh, just scan screen- my watch yeah, real quick screenshot your qr but also a big problem right now is like using your bitcoin in ethereum like do you want to use it i don't want to use it i want to keep it you know yeah oh did you hear about that dude who fucking uh remember how tesla opened up bitcoin you can buy uh tesla with bitcoin now oh okay Mm -hmm. uh (laughs) uh, two horror stories one was uh tesla double charged a dude Mm -hmm. so instead of it being like fifty thousand dollars worth of bitcoin they charged him a hundred thousand dollars worth of bitcoin um and they emptied his entire wallet oh and he was like hey tesla give my fucking bitcoin back like i this is way more than i fucking and like it took Tesla forever to get back to him, but they finally did, mm-hmm. and they gave him the fucking money back, um, or the Bitcoin back. And then the other one was uh, the dude bought the uh, uh, bought the Tesla, but during the time that he bought it, the value of Bitcoin went down enough mm-hmm. to where he no longer had the Bitcoin in his wallet, but it wasn't it. His transaction got declined by Tesla what because it hell? wasn't sufficient funds. But he had the car already. No, he, like, the order went through, mm-hmm. but then it, like, the, well, it said, like, you know, the order was going through, but then he got another email saying that it was declined because it wasn't enough funds. I wonder if Tesla, I, I wonder how you buy that, because I wonder if it's, like, based on the, like, dollar value or based on the Bitcoin, it, it, Ethereum it, it, value. It's the dollar value. So, for yeah. example, when I... That's what I'm saying. When like, that when shit fluctuates. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it, it does. So, like, for example, this this summer when I started selling selling my audio device, the I'm, I'm going to have crypto as an option. Like, you can, mm-hmm. buy, you can buy it with crypto. For the exact reason, because I, I can put that on sign. There's actually a lot of good tax reasons why you would want to accept crypto. I mean, I don't want everybody to buy it because I don't have cash flow and that's going to cause problems in the business. Mm-hmm. But aside from the point, um, the way that it works is you can integrate things like Coinbase. Coinbase mm-hmm. is your kind of middle market. And then like the way that works. Account. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. So the way that works is let's say I buy the product and it costs X amount of money. It then goes into, OK, I want to buy with Bitcoin. Then it looks at your Bitcoin wallet. They, they look at it together through Coinbase and Coinbase validates like today. The price point was this. This mm-hmm. is how much you did it. This is the transferred through and then you mm-hmm. pay it so that that's like the integration that exists but right now it's only coinbase like uh, mm-hmm. I, I don't know what tesla might have their own system which is why they're having these flaws but also their price point so high mm-hmm. like for a, a car right that it's moving so much cap around it's complicated like i, mm-hmm. I don't think it's a very um yeah. simple simple solution they're gonna have to figure out their own but i mean of, that is the way to move forward you know it you, is yeah I mean, you want to buy like mcdonald's and <laughs> stuff like that eventually you know not right now obviously but like you want <laughs> other more companies you know i want to pay ucr with my bitcoin or something you Who know was, I, what artist was it that like way back in, loans i'm like hey mm, you know just just mm, take a little yeah you want BTC, some doge? Just take <laughs> a little some doge. hey pay my college with doge right there <laughs> i dude i forget which artist it was that sold like an album like years ago and and allowed crypto to be sold sold for it fuck who was it the wu-tang was it i think it was 50 oh. cent oh. i think it was 50 because then he filed bankruptcy and oh yeah, were, then yeah, yeah it was 50 yeah and then he filed <laughs> bankruptcy and people were like wait hold on what about all your fucking crypto that you're holding yeah, and he i was don't just know like, he was like i don't know what the fuck you're talking about <laughs> i got no crypto i got no crypto i mean that's the cool part about too you can hide money if you really want to you know? yeah honestly i mean that causes 
problems yeah, on the yeah, other yeah. side yeah. of the equation. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure, you know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like in anything that's good, there's always gonna be bad. Yeah. And like, I mean, they do it with the U.S. dollar too, you know. Yeah, like, there's there's sort of fraud, money laundering. Yeah. 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 Ireland. They go to you know, they go to Colombia, go to Pablo Escobar, and just like dig up some stuff, you know. Forget go to Mexico. As long as you got a fucking ether, that's all you need. No, the like even in general, like the major banks work directly with the cartels. Like they, that's how they money launder. Like it's like it's. Oh, dude, you want to talk about money laundering? HSBC, HSBC already does like did it. They got caught for it. How much money? Like like how much money laundering do you think is happening right now in the NFC market? I've been hearing some crazy stories, bro. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but laundering happens with anything. It's anything, anything. uh, Right? It's it's so easy with with it's so easy with with crypto though. But I'm easy with crypto. Every, 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 Especially because every, you get the asset. That's like the main part about money laundering is mm-hmm. getting that tangible asset. Mm-hmm. That then you transfer over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're not we're not teaching how money laundry works. By the way, one other just we can though if you want to experience. <laughs> we, can. we can teach it. So this is how you money launder. There's a wonderful Breaking Bad episode on, on how to money launder. Oh man, I mean, there's there's a lot of Breaking Bad episodes that uh, teach you a lot of stuff that uh, true. you might not want to. Shout out Breaking Bad. <laughs> Shout out I like Breaking, Breaking Bad. Bad. That shit almost got filmed in. Um, uh, in Fontana. Oh, like, really? Yeah. Nice. But they chose Albuquerque. Sons of bitches. <laughs> yeah, it was literally just of because course, it was cheaper. Dude. Of course, Albuquerque uh, is Vince cheaper, Vince Gil- Vince Gilligan. Gilligan or Gillian? Gillian. Gillian. Yeah. Vince Gillian originally wanted Fontana, but then the studio said, Aww. go look at go look at Albuquerque because it was cheaper. Mm-hmm. And then he was like, oh, okay, yeah, it is cheaper. And it's 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 a little cooler. But yeah, shit almost got filmed in Fontana, dude. Breaks my heart. Man, we could have. I could have gone and tossed the pizza. We could have gone and tossed the pizza on the fucking Fontana roof instead of having. A I wonder Albuquerque, what's dude. up with the house. Does someone just show up weekly, just throw pizza up there? Dude, and that's stuff? someone's house. Like, <laughs> yeah, I know that's, that's what I'm saying. Dude, like, I just like, stop tossing them, bro. Just leave them on my door. I'll eat I know them. it's for real. Yeah, like, I'll actually have the I'll, food. I'll like, eat the fucking pizza, dude. <laughs> that's funny. Oh man. All right. Well, uh, we're we're, we're what, what ninety minutes right now on the show, and we're like seven seven. Time flies when we're talking. What Chief? Is that a new headset? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. He has he has control. He has the Astros. He has control. Yeah, Is that yeah, the turtle the beaches on? Now. Are you really? Yeah. 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 Listening to footsteps. Got right the turtle beaches on. Yeah. You played Apex at the same time. Thank you. Thank you. You just hear. No, my old ones broke during during the entrepreneur event. Right. Yeah, no, I don't, yeah, it's not. I remember right before we're just like crap. Uh, we gotta we gotta figure this out. Um. But yeah, no. So for uh, for the way we end the show is like I texted you. Uh, we always end with a, a concept of failure story or some some kind of story you want to share that like helped you learn, articulate, and and helped you think. It could be anything, right? Like the main reason why we do it is because a lot of times as you're progressing in your life, you realize that like those are the pivotal moments. You're like, either I didn't even get my shit together or like I need, I, I learned a lot from this or it completely changed your trajectory. So Damn, I'm curious. Couple. I'm curious if you got a, a good story for us. I have to a share. couple. <laughs> But I mean, like, I guess recently would be just like, I feel it would be like graduating college. Okay. But because like, I have to see it and understand it that there's also a pandemic. Mm -hmm. So then like that messed everything up, you know, but it's just like, I graduated. Okay. It's cool and all that, but it's like, I didn't have no jobs lined up after. So then I was still unemployed. You know, I was like, damn, what am I going to do? Like... How am I going to pay my student loan bills? Like, they're a lot. Like, what am I doing? You know, like, damn, I'm a broke college student. I'm like, wow. And then I was sitting up Brittany, you know, and then it's crazy because I think college is not about the grades and everything about that. I think it's just literally about the connections you make and the networking you make. So then the crazy part about Brittany, our homegirl, right, is like, it's just it was just random one day like i asked her for help on this like project we were doing just like little help right and i got down her number or whatever and then like going uh fast forward now you know i graduated i i she's um leader of the UCRMIS. yes that and then i i asked her i'm like damn can i be part of the club you know i'm trying to learn more you know try to get a job after this or something like that and she's like yeah join we kept the talk and then is and I remember telling her like yeah I'm unemployed right now and blah 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 right and then like fast forward to today you know I created this and then like it broke the internet and I'm just like whoa what is it? and it's just like it's like college is not gonna be the answer for everyone honestly yep. like for real and then it's just like I feel like you should just focus on something you like or maybe even like go like learn a trade you know like that's important too and you can make your own money right there you could be your own boss you know it's just like 
for sure college is not the answer for everybody you know like for certain people but you know you just keep working and improving every day and then something will come out of it you know but you have to keep improving every day you know so then that's the whole point like I graduated I wasn't employed you know but then I was like what am I gonna do like what am I gonna do like I, I graduated in business I obviously want to start a business you know so then you know I graduated my sister's been a jeweler for 15 years and I was like, all right, cool. I graduated. I'm going to do, um, I'm going to try to start a family business, you know, so we could get out the hood, you know, uh, get focused on one business for the whole family, you know, so we could gain that money. I mean, and that's where I'm at right now. You know, I'm trying to create that. And I, I, I feel like I'm going to have a pretty good chance of doing that, you know. So, I mean, just like don't give up, you know, it's like the first thing that might be a failure you know it might lead to other things you know so that's that's the whole point you know i graduated and then i was unemployed and i i felt like i was a failure but like you know i just kept improving every day little by little you know just paid attention to the people that you know i'm trying to learn from and then like something will come out of it you know but you have to put in that work you know you have to so yeah so that's a failure that turned into like a success story right now you know and that's where i'm at no, absolutely. And I, and I love it. Like, like you said, the, the biggest thing for any college student is don't bank on your college degree for anything. Mm -mm. You got to put the work in no matter what you want to do, whatever passion you have, whether it be in the corporate side or whether it be building your own company or whatever the hell it is. Right. If you don't put in the work, things ain't going to magically happen. Mm -mm. Yeah. Unless you have a huge network and that's good for you. And, you know, yeah. props to you. And like, like everybody's got daddy's money lying around, dude. Yeah, yeah. Like, and that's, you know, hey. For each his own, but like that, for majority of people, you gotta hustle, you gotta work. No, nothing comes easy. Yeah. Uh, and and I respect that kind of like mindset you brought up, which is like, look, I'm gonna focus on one thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna put my time into this. I'm gonna I'm gonna figure it out. Uh, obviously, shout out to Brittany. Like yeah, she she, Brittany. she helps yeah. out for everything. She, she plugs the show. She plugs great, out everything. Yeah, but it's just crazy. <laughs> like like the way I see about it, it was just that one day that I asked her for help. You know, and it literally led to this podcast. You mm -hmm. know, it was just that one time I asked That's her for help. Need, just that little string, and then like years later like she hits me up you're like and then she introduces me to you and now i'm here you know and yeah. it's, it's all wild you know it's just like you never know you never know until like you have to go you have to do it you yeah. have to do it yeah. and then like you'll connect the dots you know but it's hard going and not knowing what to do at first but i mean that's that's the way it is you know <laughs> that's the way it is yeah, take, take the chances yeah. What does the uh, what does uh, Mark Cuban always say? No balls, no babies. No balls. <laughs> I've never heard. Yeah. I've never heard of that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> but I mean it makes sense. No yes, balls, no babies. No, it no does, but bro, I've never heard yeah, of that. Yeah, no balls, part. no babies. I've dude. watched. I watched every episode <laughs> of Shark Tank. Probably Apparently not, dude. He said it like two. He said right it now. like three times before on Shark Tank. Dude, I. I wow, I guess I just kind of. I, I guess he just zoned out on. Oh man, I'm fucking in it. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah. No balls, no babies, dude. You don't take the chances. Nothing's really gonna happen. Yeah. No. I mean, I took a chance, bro, and I mean, like people loved it, you know, like, and I'm glad I did. Like, like I said, I was like, I was doubting it, you know, I was doubting it. I was like, oh, because my sister looked at it and she's like, damn, that's ugly. But I mean, like, <laughs> she didn't understand the, you yeah. know, she didn't understand the concept, she didn't understand the vision. But like, not everybody's gonna understand the vision. Not everybody's gonna understand it. But it's like, that's okay. there's certain people that are gonna like. It's not it, made for know? them. It's not. It literally, is. it was not made for the people that don't. My chain was not made for people that don't understand yeah. it. You know, it's for people that understand like the crypto and the physical world. You know, yeah. and it, a combination of both. Yeah, that's like, that's like with any art. Like I, mm -hmm. I have, uh, like it blows my mind when people like tell me that they don't like going to like museum, like art museums, mm -hmm. to like look at the art. They're like, oh, I could just fucking look it up mm -hmm. on Google and be like, the fuck are you talking about? Like the fact that you can get like right up to it mm -hmm. and see like the brush strokes, like that's just not made for them, dude. Mm -hmm. Like it's, you, can, it's pretty nice on Google nowadays. You can. You all right, fuck <laughs> it. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, we'll go to museums. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go. I like VR museums now, bro. That's no, yeah, the way. That, yeah, dude. I, I. Uh, there was a fuck. I, I've never done it, but I saw a video of somebody doing it. We're, we're getting off tangent a little bit. We'll, we'll close it off after this. But like, have you seen that you can with like some it's of like the, the NFT ta tangent timer? Uh. No, some of the <laughs> NFT artwork. You, you know that you can make them like three D, right? Mm -hmm. Like you, where you can walk through them and shit like that. Mm -hmm. Like that blows my fucking mind, mm -hmm. dude. The fact that you can like you're looking at like a piece like dead on, and you see it, and then you can like walk forward and VR oh, and like. Oh, okay. So then like the cool part is like there's VR and then there's AR. Yeah, you yeah, know? The AR. Yeah. Yeah. So like AR is like arguments to reality. So it is like I can have some right there and like i can have like my pokemon right here you know mm -hmm. argument to reality so that's gonna be cool imagine like when like a company invents that like wait until you can put a chain on that pikachu hey <laughs> hey you already hey. you already you already know hey. who, who, who's gonna be the the man to do it i mean mm -hmm. the, the biggest thing right 
to close it out, like you just had to bring up AR and VR, I'm gonna have to do it really quick. I know, man. Let's go back to the No, but the biggest thing is like, there's so many technologies that are all coming together, right? AR has more application today because VR just can't be at the standpoint. Mm -hmm. VR is dope, but it's not as good as AR. And then there's well, gonna be things like mixed reality. Yeah. Things are gonna all change. Blockchain tied into this, tied into that, tied into this. Like, I can't wait. I, I just think this entire, like, what we know of today is irrelevant because, yeah. like, what's going to happen 10 years? We're Bro, all just going to be like... Anything. Like, fucking think, like, 10 years ago, we had fucking flip phones and Blackberries. But Bro, I don't feel like this now. is, remember, like, remember anything. Remember the T9 text? You yeah, dude. Three times yeah, under, like remember <laughs> underneath your fucking desk? You, like, like yeah. a fucking robot just, like, texting, looking <laughs> forward. <laughs> but I honestly feel like this is the most important Yeah. This is time. a turning point. This, this is, is a turning point for us. Either we're going to go like, one way or another way. Like, once we blockchain everything, or at least try to and start going that way, like, bro, like, I feel like the world will move faster. All the banking faster, systems are basically bro. blockchain, like, as we faster. speak. Like, blo like uh, big banks, like, you think, like, you know, JP All Morgan regulatory Chase, systems are, they're are all blockchain going. systems. Yeah. They're mm -hmm. all going towards blockchain inventory, mm -hmm. supply chain, yeah, all that first shit, first they, they try to deny it, but, nah, -uh, you can't deny the future, No one, No one is this big. No. They're, already, they're already coming through, you know, I think it was Chase. They they did something for crypto or something, like Visa and MasterCard, like, they're, you know, they're creating their, their, their Bitcoin card that you can purchase mm -hmm. like yeah they're coming bro yep they're coming they're late yeah and they said. hate it but they gotta they have to jump on it because yeah, they they're, they're losing they have, money they, they have no choice at this point mm -hmm. so i guess to close out you can uh you want to plug anything you want to shout out anything anything else you want to do to close out today's show uh, uh i mean thank you guys for you know uh bringing me on of course I just wanna, you yeah, know thank you Thank everybody that's supporting me. Thanks everybody that likes the chain, you know. Keep up with me. I got a new chain coming up. That's, I feel like that one's dope too, you know. And I got a cool little project at the end of the month that I feel like the NFT community is going to like, you know. But, I mean, shout out all the homies. <laughs> shout out Brittany too. Absolutely, absolutely. Shout out my homie Dara and Polar. There we go, there we go. But for everybody, tune in today. Thank you for tuning in to The Brew. Uh, if you enjoy this episode, it'll be live on YouTube as well on uh, Wednesday. So we'll be able to distribute it out from there as well. But uh, Wait, can I shout out one person? Of course. Go for it. Right. You shout out everybody. Man, you can right. go through your whole yeah, family. Your list list like <laughs> <laughs> no, that's why. I shout out my mom. Shout out my mom. Right, yeah, 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 for man. sure, man. No, but yeah, um, pleasure having you on. It was a great conversation. Honestly, yeah, it was a great conversation, man. I, I like it. It was a good. It was a good in between of like our mindsets. Uh, I, I'm, I'm all about it. Dude. Keep in mind, this whole time, dude, I've been, I've been looking at you like I want to fucking just grab you, but I've, <laughs> I've been, I've been holding <laughs> you. <laughs> you, <laughs> you better <laughs> clench your fist this whole time. I don't know if you right. noticed. It'll be on camera once you watch the replay. But, uh, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> anytime I talk, you just see your fist just shake. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you for tuning in. That's it. That's a wrap for today. Peace.